If there is a target population definitely worth thinking about in your health promotion efforts, it is older adults. Uh, not only because they are full of wisdom and they have lived amazing experiences that they often love sharing with us, uh, but and because you know sometimes they face unique health challenges like an increased risk of chronic disease, but things like social isolation and mental health issues and food insecurity, there's all sorts of reasons why they need our attention. But another good reason for focusing on this group is that there are so many of them. So uh, right now, well, as of 2022, the percentage of can Canada's population that's 65 and older is almost like one in five of Canadians. So only about like 60-ish percent of the population is like working age that can help to support this older population and of course the younger population as well. And if you kind of look at it this way, the number of persons ages 15 to 64 per person age 65. So back in like the 70s, there was about eight people 15 to 64 for every one older person, one person over 65. Right now, it's about three people in this age group for every one person in the in the 65 and older age group so my point is there's a lot of older people people are living longer modern medicine is helping that of course there is the uh, baby boomers that are getting older the people that were born right after the war where there was a high um, uh, infant birth rate um, so I'm just saying, like, if you're looking for a population that, like, is worth worth your time <laughs> and that definitely is going to be the topic of discussion for the foreseeable future, it is definitely this population. And when we're talking about physical activity, this population is especially important because we do notice that activity levels for both um, women and men tend to really drop off in that older age group. And this article from uh, Obesity Reviews summarizes as well, it summarizes it, the data well, and this is based on uh, WHO water energy expenditure levels, that the average, average person or average subject in their study starts with a sedentary lifestyle, becomes moderately active or active during adulthood, and then returns back to sedentary behavior. So what we may want to do is reduce the amount of um, physical inactivity and sedentary behavior in those older adults. Okay. That said, um, what we need to realize is that, you know, I don't have here like these are the activities you should do with people over the age of 65 because it really depends. And there is such a range of physical capacities that you can see over the age of 65. Like there is a major difference that can be seen in like two people that are 75, for instance. One could be still super active. One could be like competing in races, for instance. So you look at some people are like ultra marathoners at, at age 75, which is like <laughs> so impressive. And there's people that are, you know, confined to a hospital bed or that, you know, can't move around much or have various chronic diseases. And so it's impossible to say like, this is what people over the age of 65 need as far as physical activity goes. You have to get to know your population, right? But what this slide does is it goes over some of the changes that can occur with age that may compromise ability. Physical fitness um, that can challenge uh, a person's ability to participate in physical activity or just go about their daily lives as well, right? So we tend to kind of peak as far as physical fitness and physiological performance around uh, 20 to 30 years of age. So congratulations, you're probably at your peak. If you're in my class, you're probably around your peak as far as physiological function goes. It doesn't mean it's like your life is downhill. I actually think life gets better with age, but that's just me. Um, but we do definitely see a decrease in muscular strength. We see a decrease in cardiovascular ability and all of these things can be positively affected by exercise, but you want to meet someone where they are, right? Again, it's not about necessarily meeting a, a particular like threshold for physical activity. As a general rule, if someone is more on the inactive side of things, 
what we want to do is increase that. <laughs> increase that a little bit or a lot. And ideally increase it in a way where it becomes a sustainable part of that person's life, not just like a one-off that that person does. Okay. So I actually really liked this concept. Like you're just because you're, you at, you are active doesn't mean you won't age. Like we, we all age, we all get older and we, our body starts, you know, shutting down in different ways. Shutting down isn't the best word, but it, you know, certain the organ function is compromised. Organs don't work as, as, as efficiently, you know, we don't maybe look as good. <laughs> Things change with age. Like we can't stop aging from happening. However, we can attenuate, we can make the effects of aging less dramatic and less impactful as far as our, our quality of life more than anything by having a regular practice of physical activity. And I like this uh, article, this kind of like perspective and what they kind of argue is that exercise, the way it like an acute bout of exercise, like exercising for 30 minutes, it stresses the body. Exercise is a stressor and it stresses the body in things like um, uh, promoting increased large artery stiffness and inflammation in the short term. And these are things we see with aging, right? So this acute bout of, of exercise, it like, it almost mimics the effects of aging by promoting these kind of things. But after that acute bout of exercise, you recover. Acute bout of exercise, you recover. Acute bout of exercise, you recover. And all that like tests the body, your body recovers, tests the body, the body recovers. This is something that this article is proposing helps to like make the body more ready to deal with the, the physiological changes that occur with age. And accordingly, someone that regularly exercise their age and chronic disease related dysfunction is more is minimal compared to those people that never exercised because exercise helps to stress the body in a way that that helps us adapt and help us prepare ourselves for aging right so i just like that idea um as like a, a reason as to why having that regular practice of physical activity uh, can be potentially quite beneficial to make us age more gracefully <laughs> make us not it's not just about looking good it's about like it's about like like maximize to me it's all about quality of life and living like the most amount of time in the best kind of state okay so back to guidelines as far as what uh csep canadian society for exercise physiology recommends for adults 65 and older. Again, we saw this with children. We saw this with adults. They recommend this 24 hour movement guideline. And again, they break it up into physical activity, sleep and sedentary behavior. Okay. So when it comes to physical activity, that advice of 150 minutes per week, it's still there, right? They also recommend muscle strengthening activity twice a week. It's the same thing. We see the same thing as we saw for adults. Okay. Uh, sleep is similar as well, about seven to eight hours of sleep. And again, reducing sedentary time. Okay. So it's, it, they're actually very similar to uh, the guidelines we see for adults. Okay. However, like I mentioned, older adults have unique challenges and those unique challenges, there's a huge spectrum of, of where an individual might lie as far as, as what considerations they need right? Principles of exercise prescription that maybe you've learned in BBK 343 or in some of your other classes, they're the same, you know, as, and, and one of those main, um, main principles is like individualization, right? And making sure that you are minimizing the amount of harm and maybe maximizing the amount of good. So we want to reduce the risk of injury. So, you got to take care when you're discerning, discerning the type and, and intensity of exercise. That's why it's important to have that initial assessment and figure out where someone is starting from and meet them where they are. Do not give the same exercise prescription to all of your clients, right? That's what are you even doing? 
you know, we're all different and we need a different type of prescription. And ideally that person works with you to figure out what's best for them. Okay. There's more ECG abnormalities, more variations in, in heart rate. And so we need this careful progression with intensity and duration, slow warm up, uh, good cool down. We need stretch all those regular things that we see in, you know, good exercise prescription. It's also important for older adults, just a little bit more care, attention, individualization, and appreciation for the large variety variation, I should say, you could see in this age group. As far as the active people, active places, BC framework, their goal is to increase physical activity levels and decrease sedentary behaviors in older adults. And one of their main action areas is to implement this choose to move initiative. So choose to move, love this health promotion initiative. And there is a BPK person that's actually one of the leads on this project. So I'll get to that in a second. So choose to move is this program that's part of Healthy Aging BC and it's run by people at SFU and UBC and it's a targeted to people over the ages of 60 using like community centers and other areas and the idea here is not to be like this is the type of exercise you should do or this is the type of gym you need to go to it's really choice based choose to move. So it's choice based where like an older adult is paired up usually with some sort of activity coach or with group meetings and ongoing check-ins. So that person, it's like a, it's like a physical activity support network where you get to choose what type of physical activity you actually participate in. And during COVID, they, because a lot of this was in person, they actually quickly changed to also have an online virtual component. And they were quite successful in how that was able to run too. So you can do it anywhere. It's not like you have to go to a particular place, but you work with these coaches, you work within the group meetings to like develop this love for and this practice for and this lifestyle of physical activity in a way that you want to do it. Okay. So this is from their website. You work one-on-one -on -one with a trained activity coach to create a tailor-made physical activity plan to meet your health and fitness goals. You choose activities that you know you will enjoy and are able to do. Activities can range from organized fitness to individual activities you do on your own schedule. Join a group of other choose to movers to share successes and challenges. Right. So this is actually from their promotional material as well. I feel like I've got energy again, which is something I haven't had for a long time. And not only amazes me, it amazes my husband. He hasn't seen that in me for a long time. The power of testimonials. <laughs> they can be quite effective. So um, again, I like this and it kind of speaks to what we're talking about because physical activity promotion, it's so hard to know what's going to make someone adopt a practice of physical activity. And that's why you have to work with that person. This is what we've been saying all along. You can't assume that you're going to run this one activity in one community center and it's going to speak to everyone because we're all different. And that's been one of the problems in health promotion is we've been given like one size fits all like interventions for people, but one size fits all often fits few. So that's why it's important to have these like tailor-made interventions that speak to people's situations and needs and likes and preferences. So they actually have that sense of like ownership and freedom and autonomy in their um, physical activity practice. So I said there was a BPK link with this as well. So you might recognize this uh, lovely woman right here, Dawn Mackey, um, who is part of the chronic disease lab here in BPK. And she just got a large uh, bit of funding from C CIHR. We're always celebrating that because it's really hard to get funding these days. Uh, but she just got a large amount of funding to help co-lead uh, part of the Choose to Move uh, initiative because they have a lot of different kind of subsections. So I'll just read. So she speaks of implementation science. I'm going to talk about that later when we get to the system science component of this uh, course. But I want to read a few of her quotes. So loneliness and social isolation are associated with cognitive decline, more severe mental health systems, and even early death. 
says Mackey, an associate professor of SFU's biomedical physiology and kinesiology department, that's us, and a Michael Smith scholar. So the COVID-19 pandemic exacerbated this vicious cycle spiral. Being act active, mobile, and connected supports older adults to live healthier lives and interact more fully with their communities, right? So um, the SFU team is actually focused on sex and gender equality, and they're in particular going to be working with uh, to promote physical activity in older men, which is often a neglected group when it comes to physical activity promotion. Right? And I love this statement right here. What's important in this work is that we co design health promoting programs that uniquely match the needs and preferences of diverse populations of older adults and the organizations that serve them to ultimately help ensure active and socially engaged seniors. We want to help enable community-based senior service organizations to deliver health promoting programs that are currently outside their capacity and train the next generation of implementation science researchers. So again, you know, you could argue that the work she's doing and the work in collaboration with others is about setting up some systems and supports that are going to help people to, to choose the activities that are going to serve them best and they're going to, again, help promote that level of physical activity that's going to let them age in a way that they can still maintain independence and then still enjoy their lives, etc. So. To kind of summarize this whole unit, physical activity, super important, any age, we love it, it's awesome. We gotta change our mental models around physical activity to make it something fun that people wanna do, you know, but we have to tailor our programs, tailor our, our, our interventions towards the people that we serve. And how do we do that? We get to know them, we get to know their unique needs, and we don't assume what people need based on our preconceived notions of them. Right? But each age group is going to have slightly different considerations. But a general rule is most of us could more <laughs> our physical activity. Most of us could be more active. And especially in those that are inactive now, increasing their physical activity levels from an active to even just a little bit more active, that can have pronounced um, effects on mitigating some of the effects of aging and also on reducing risk of things like chronic disease, but also just on them enjoying their life more. And that's why the role of a health promoter in physical activity is so important because you, you can like change lives, right? You can help people like regain confidence and control over their life. It's ultimately up to them, but we can facilitate that process. But we want to make sure we're speaking to their needs and not just telling them what we think we, they need to do. Anyways, <laughs> that's all for this and I will see you in the next unit.